Hey everyone, I uh, hope you've had a nice week. So uh, yeah, we're just on to week two now of our weekly photography challenges. Uh, firstly, I'd just like to say thanks to all those who got involved in last week's challenge. Um, it was great, so many submissions. Uh, so I just thought I'd show you a few of them first. And then once you've done that, I'll introduce you then to the new, um, the new challenge for this week. Cool, so yeah, if you missed the first week of the project, don't worry, you can yeah, join now if you want to. Um, yeah, you can yeah, take part in the first week's challenge as well, or you can start from this week's challenge too. Um, and if you are interested, there is a group designated to the project as well, so you can see the link just above the video there. So just click on there, join in, get involved in the conversation, and it'd be great as well just to see some of your images there as well. Cool, but yeah, so we'll go on to week two now. So week two is called Boring Objects, fun title. Uh, but yeah, basically the idea is how can we photograph everyday objects and make them look interesting. So uh, photographers have been doing, doing that for years. There's loads of projects out there and people have made careers by just photographing just mundane, boring objects. Um, so I'll introduce you to a few of those projects um, in a few moments in the video there and just a few photographers who use that and their style of photography there as well. Um, but yeah, so for this project, the idea is eight household objects that I've listed. Um, and basically what I would like you to do is to photograph them in two ways. So the first way to photograph them is from afar. So the object is placed in the distance of the image. Uh, therefore you can just get a good background and in, you know where the set of the, uh, of the object is there as well so it's quite a nice nice way of framing the image uh, and then the second one is a close-up so from near um, and the idea of that is getting close to the object and then just trying to find some interesting angles whether there's some interesting patterns shadows shapes from that object uh, and then just trying to make it look as interesting as possible really um, and then there's certain things to think about when you're doing this type of photography. So the focus is really important. Um, so if you don't have a macro lens when you're close up, um, like the majority of lenses or your smartphone cameras, they'll have a certain distance where they can go to, where they can be able to focus. Um, so it's just about finding that distance uh, and, then any, and then making sure that the, Im that the image is in focus when you then press the shutter there. So just keep an eye on that when you're trying to make the image. Um, also, framing is really key, so just make sure the object is nicely placed in the in, in the frame of the image. And then light is also really important. Um, so yeah, in the house, um, natural light uh, through the windows is a really good one. So the, like, the, the light moves around the house at different times of the day. So you'll get some interesting pockets of light and pockets of shadow uh, where, through, the, through the day there. So just keep an eye on that and then maybe look to place your objects within those areas of light. Uh, and that'll just help make it a bit more interesting as well. Uh, yeah, so basically what we'll do now is just look at a couple of uh, uh, examples of photographers who sort of explore um, still life uh, and everyday objects. Um, and then, yeah, just kind of give you a bit of a few ideas, a bit of inspiration and something that you can take from that as well. Cool. Cool. Yeah, so we'll just start here with some images taken from far away. Um, so these are some examples from a photographer called William Eggleston um, and he photographs just everyday objects in America. Uh, you'll see from these images he likes colour and very vibrant colours. The reds are always very popular in his work. Uh, so think about colours that you can kind of focus on when you're taking your images. Um, also he's very much about natural light and the light coming in. So in this image here he's got the condiments next to the window and how he's used that light to illuminate them. Uh, think about that when you're arranging your images as well. Um, yeah, and then you've also got um, another American photographer called Stephen Shaw, very similar actually in terms of how he is on the subjects that he focuses on. Uh, so again, you can see the use of light in the room and how that's created shadows and illuminated the chairs. Uh, something that you can really consider as well, especially at home. Um, and then also the different angles of how you can capture the images. So you see the puzzle here is shot above. Um, and then also these light bulbs here where he shot into the image so it kind of leads you into it and around the corner with the pavement which is really interesting. Um, also there's like a hint of reflection in the window there so something that you can always consider as well. 
Uh, and now we'll look at some of the closer up images. So this is um, a photographer called Albert Rangapach. Um, and he photographs um, everyday objects from close up. Uh, so you'll see here like flowers, um, you'll look for detail, uh, textures, um, patterns within those images there. And then the use of light is really strong within there as well. Um, so yeah, when you're looking at your objects, get close in and see where the detail is and uh, kind of try and pick that out. And you'll see in the leaves there as well, um, like the, the, the incredible detail that he's managed to find there. Um, yeah, and then we've also got Andre Cortez, who just photographs general objects in the home there as well. So you'll see a fork and a, and a plate there. Um, and he's very strong in his use of shadows. Um, so yeah, think about how you could light your images and then how you can create that shadow and strong depth there as well. And you'll see that within a lot of his work. You've got this one here as well that you can see it in. Um, and then you've also got a photographer called Carl Blasfeld, and he's very famous for his um, his images of flowers. Um, so these again are just kind of close up images of flowers, and again he's captured the detail incredibly. Um, but also his his lighting and and his use of space is really important. So you kind of think about how you can use space and light to highlight the detail in the images but yeah so there's a few examples there for you to kind of get a bit of inspiration from um and yeah just kind of use them as a guide to help you figure out how you would like to arrange your images as well great so um yeah so basically any images you take uh, please feel free to share them on the group we'd love to see what you're making at home and if you have any questions um, around troubleshooting or there's an image that you'd really like to try and recreate and you're struggling to find how to do that, uh, just throw a question in the comments there or throw a question on the group um, and I'll try and help as much as I can uh, in that and just, yeah, anything that you need help with or any ideas or things that you're, yeah, you're trying to figure out, just feel free to contact me uh, through the group and uh, we can, yeah, make that happen as well. But that'll be ace. But uh, yeah, so look forward to see what you do. Uh, and have a great week. All right. Cheers.